I always did that because I knew one day, like, for example, like. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like, already posted that one, man. <laughs> that's his first, that's his first album. Mm. Who's going to have it? You, you could say you met Jay-Z, whatever, but you can't tell me you met Jay-Z during his first album and have a picture to prove it. Only yeah. certain people do. <laughs> Real Talk with Star Scorpio, Season 9, Episode 1. It's a genuine pleasure to kick off this season with an incredible guest. But before I dive into the conversation, I want to give a big shout out to some of my quote-unquote big brothers from back in my public school days. The grade above me was filled with a lot of guys that inspired me. I'm a name drop now. So there was Dwayne Martin aka Riggs, rest in peace. There's Greg Simon, there's names like Rob Fada and Nick Fortress. Moving up one level, you had my brother David, and there's a man named Sean Thibodeau. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, you remember. But now, a tier above that, you got names like Johan, you got Hugo, you got Steve, aka Buck, and a special shout out to my man who I'm Always chatting with now on Instagram, Jeff Crosby. Oh, word? Yes. <laughs> and now I'm bro, thrilled I'm to introduce my guest, <laughs> another big bro, Kwame. He's been a prominent figure in the Canadian entertainment industry for as long as I can remember. Kwame wears many hats as a writer, filmmaker, producer, director, and he's a true staple in the hip hop industry in the north kwame welcome to real talk with star scorpio how you doing today i'm good brother i'm good brother i didn't know you you, you talked to you talked to crossbites <laughs> you go man yeah crossbites tell him i say what's up man well he's an avid listener and watcher of the podcast so he's gonna he's gonna hear this man crosby holy crap that's a blast from the past boy going back man going back Yo, so so Kwame, thanks for doing this. And um, on Real Talk, we like to build a timeline here, man. So first, let the people know, where, let my audience know, where were you born and raised? Uh, so born and raised Toronto, Ontario, Canada, of course. Um, my parents immigrated from Guyana here mm. in the late 60s. Um, it was me and my older brother. We uh, first... The first real place that I know of was 111 Megan Avenue, which was in East York. That's like um, Victoria Park and Eglinton around mm. that area. And then we moved to 272 Roywood Drive. That was just a legendary neighborhood right there. You know, it was Roywood, Parkwoods, Cairn Road. Like, you know, that's that that's that's the that was the neighborhood you know that i spent most of my time and uh yeah you know uh that that was that was that was the growing up life man that was the spot yeah yeah you once you drop right with to me fence side all those areas i'm going to talk about our schools in a minute but mm -hmm. um that was legendary you're talking a lot of people came out of there mm -hmm. and i believe like back in the days roywood was that area too that your your parents heard about you know what I mean but you coming from Roywood was it dangerous there and when I say dangerous I'm not talking about the gunman per se but we always heard about Roywood what we, what's your take on Roywood no nah, you know, Roywood was Roywood was so family oriented back in the uh late 70s early 80s you know what I mean? It was so like <clears throat> the one thing I remember about when we first moved out there is like, you know, 272 Roy was right across the street from this park. Mm. And you know, we had the Masonettes and then you had the park around there. The Masonettes, that's what I was talking about, though. Yeah, but go Masonettes ahead. Had, Masonettes had 
Mason has had a um a a a, a, a reputation that was not warranted. Mm. Like when you were little, you know, it was like the boogeyman lived in in the Mason ass. But really and truly, you know what I mean? Like it, it's just it was just a different, you know, it was, it was projects and there's a lot of older kids, a lot of, you know, kids that were bullies and stuff like that. But really and truly, it was nothing to be afraid of. Yeah. I just, you know, you just never mess with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, it's just like, you know, people always thought like George S. Henry was the soft guy school, Victoria Park and Banye were, were the mads mads. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, no, but Roywood to me growing up was probably the greatest place I could ever live because there were so many kids within your age group, like a five year split. So you had the big homies, you had the youngins, you had kids your age, and you could always go in the park and have a game of football. You could always go down the block and go to Roywood and play some basketball. And in the winter, when the ice froze, you jumped on the ice and played some hockey. hockey you yeah. Fence side and you had the 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 ice arena at fence side. So like there was every the tennis courts by um by Karen Road. Like um, you know, there was always anything you wanted to get into, it was just there. It was just a get on your bicycle and you can get any type of flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate growing up in that area. I think it was one of the best experiences. And you're one of my big bros. So it's kind of weird to hear you say you had the the older cats too that were looking out for the youth them, which I which I appreciated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah, because like my brother was a year older than me. And there's like across the street, there's this guy named Mike Daly and a couple of I, I don't remember too many of them. Mm -hmm. But um, Mike Daly, Don Cumberbatch, who is um, yeah, uh, Darren's older sister, mm -hmm. to hang out with, uh, and you didn't know at the time, but she used to hang out with Deborah. Deborah Cox used to be up in that area. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, mm -hmm. Deborah Cox used to be right. You know what I mean? She was just with the big, the you know, she was older, so she was around there. And then um, even in Parkwoods. You had the Shayla Thompson and um, her brother and uh, Cree Summers used to hang out in Parkwoods. What? Yeah, man. Just, Cree Summers, yo, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, 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 Cree Summers used to be up in Roywood, all right, up in Parkwoods and stuff like that. So it was, uh, it was, it was pretty. Yeah, you just you didn't know, you know. What I mean, it's just you find out these things later on in life, and then you know mm. you're watching you're watching different world. And there's Shayla as an extra. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, we, we it was pretty dope. It was pretty dope. Were you, are you surprised by, because anyone could say this from any hood they're from, right? Mm -hmm. But the talent that came out of our area in yeah. that vicinity, it's just crazy. You know what I mean? Were you surprised by it? Or did you, did you have a sense of this was going on? I, I wasn't surprised. I'm I, I'm a little surprised we didn't have more mm. because the great thing about that area around that time was like break dancing was big, rapping was big, you know, and um, you know Friday every other Friday was Friday night dances at Donview, mm. and Friday night dances at Donview was legendary. Like Friday night dances at Donview when you were like. 13, 14 years old. It's like if you were at a club. Right. Like from <laughs> Flemo would come, people from Victor, it, everywhere. Just you, you try to get in and, you know, God bless the, um, God bless the, uh, the parent volunteers trying to be like, yo, you don't live around this neighborhood. We don't know you. You yeah. can't come here. But that was like the spot you'd have. We had break dancing battles. It was, it, you know, it, so it was a lot of talented people around there. Mm. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I thought we could have probably had some more, and there probably, you know, was all, you know, I think everybody was just having fun and just trying to figure it out. But you know, yeah, any given Sunday, something was popping off in that area. Yeah, trust me. 
So you mentioned Donview, but I want to take a step back, though. What public school did you go to? Name it for me. I went to Fenside. Whoa. I went so to you Fenside. went to Fenside. You didn't go to Brookbanks. No, I went to Fenside. I went to Fenside. All my all my all my homies were in Brookbanks. Mm. So, you know, all, all my fr- uh, like when I was in Fenside, I was hanging out with a guy named like Steve Shishi and Eddie Moshe, Corey Brooks, um, most of uh, you know, um Leonie White and uh Cheryl Sterling, who just passed away. Mm, all right, team. Um, but you know what I mean? Like most of my friends, like the guy friends I had in public school were like white, the white boys. Right. That's where I got my BMX biking in and playing hockey and all that stuff. Mm. But when, when I went to Donview, that that's that's when the life be, that's when the real life began, you know. That's a, that's a different beast. Do you uh, remember it? So let's go to Donview now. Mm-hmm. Do you remember when breakdance came in? Because tell me the years that you went to Donview because it was, changed when I we were the last one to hit a grade nine. We were seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Our public school went to grade six, and I believe Fenside did too. Yeah. But we were the only ones in when I was in Victoria Park. They started Vic Park in grade nine, so everyone knew each other. But we did grade nine in Donview. Are you the same before George yeah, Henry? I, I did. I did. I was seven, eight, and nine. Yeah, Donview, and that was like that was like 80, 82, 83, 84, 85, 85, 86. Type mm. of thing. So I went in there when I was 12, and I, you know, I remember, I remember that summer coming like that summer. I was, I was, at, I was doing, um, Flemington Park Recreation. Mm-hmm. So I like you know what I mean like Mom Dukes and then was like you know you, you're gonna go to Flemington Park every day that was our daycare you know what I'm saying we went there the morning came back in the afternoon that was that was dope because Flemo had a reputation too yeah I know <laughs> so when I got there it's like you know you had to just kind of you know represent so I was good with the Flemington Park kids and we were there we played floor hockey basketball. It was just like um, you know, just like like a summer camp type of thing. Mm. I remember this. I can't remember the guy's name, but this guy was just like, played me this song, man, and my life changed. And it was it was Planet Rock, yeah, by uh, Africa Bambata. And then uh, I was a little worried going into grade seven because I knew. I probably wasn't going to be hanging out with my friends that I was in public school with. I I was just like, shit, I, you know, this is all I know from grade two to grade six. And now I'm going somewhere else. I don't know nothing. I don't know nobody. So I'm nervous. Mm. But my brother had already been there. So he was already, he was going into grade eight and he was hanging out with um, Rick Fraser, Mm. uh, uh, Shayla Thompson, uh, Jackie James, the other Ricky, like he he had he was established. He had his crew established. So as a little brother, I knew them because they used to come to our house lunchtime, or you know what I mean. So I knew the older kids. Yeah. And so my brother knew people from Parkwoods. He knew people from Karen Road, and I remember him telling me, "Say, yo." I don't even know if I told him I was nervous or what, or he just sensed it. He goes, when you get to school, you look for a guy named Buckwheat. He looks <laughs> like Buckwheat from Little Rascals. Tell him I'm your big brother. You're good. <laughs> so first day of class, I'm sitting in my seat and like homeroom. And the teacher says, the teacher says, you know, trying to get to know everybody, he goes, he, 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 he asked us about music. Mm. And so he asked the kid behind, like a little bit behind me, what music you listen to, da, da, da. And I heard this kid say, you know, my favorite song is Planet Rock from Africa. But wow, I turned my back and I just yeah. had this big grin. <laughs> and so the teacher asked me, I was like, same thing. You know, I was like, Planet Rock. And yeah. Then, you know, it's all rock, kid, you know. So after that class, he rolled up to me. He's like, hey, what's your name? I'm like, 
no, I go to him. I go up to him. I said, hey, yeah, you like Plant Rock? He's like, yeah, man, you know, rap music. And he said, what's your name? I said, Damon Mason. And he said, you're Danny's little brother. I'm like, yeah. He goes, I'm Buckwheat. I'm like, oh, my brother told me to look out for you. He's like, yeah, come roll with me. Mm. It was like recess. And then he introduced me to Hugo, Everton, Wayne Simmons, and then Johan. And from that day on, it was us. That was the crew. That's it, yeah. Yeah. That was that was the, the illest. You, you ask anybody who went to FedSide around that time. Yeah. Knew us five. We that was <laughs> that was it. Best break dancers. We had the swag. It was the, that was the crew deep right there, man. So yeah, that was that was dope. That was dope. Yeah, it's it's good that you remember this. And I'm crazy like that. People will always say to me, like, mm-hmm. that's the one thing. It's weird. Like, I remember so much about those times. You know? mm. That's 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 a good thing, man. That's a good thing. Cause then you that's why I want to share your story too. But you just dropped a, a name to me there, right? Mm. I remember I'm a lot younger than you, right? Yeah. But when I got to um Domview, I'm going off track a minute, but yeah. I still you said Everton. Yeah. Do Everton. you remember that incident? Yes. I was I telling my brother this the oh. other day where that guy got hit with the ha- yeah, that was the um, baseball bat, right? That was that was um what's her name's brother? Damn it. Um Sonia. Mm-hmm. So his brother yeah yeah i can't remember his name but yeah that's the first time as a, as a youth we knew somebody that died like that, that was yeah the first time. and that's mm-hmm. crazy because that was at that was in flemington park and that was at the flemington park dance and mm-hmm. everything was there like we never we were like i ain't going to that i'm not going to no flip you know we you know what i mean like yeah. my parents weren't letting me go to no flemington park dance and all that Mm. But yeah, uh, everything got hit, and um, God, I wish I it started with a C. His name, but yeah, bro, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember. But you know what, though, mm. um, see how you don't forget that, right? And picture me a little younger, a little younger than you. That rocked my world. You know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. I knew everything around the way, like everybody else, like mm-hmm. you, Hugo, Jeff, Crow, everybody, right? Mm-hmm. But when I heard of this, I knew everything by face and mm-hmm. by Park Woods and stuff. And then when you read it, the funny thing, though, Kwame, I, I keep a lot of articles from the Toronto mm-hmm. Sun, right? Okay. So I even found articles from my boys that wanted to know certain things. I'm like, yo, I got that. Like big events that happened in, in our area, right? Yeah. I know I have that article. I want to pull it up. But that really rocked me as a youth hearing that. So I can imagine you hearing that because you you knew yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. it was like it, that was like you, you know it's was, it was surreal in a sense because like your friend got hurt like you know what i mean your crew one of your crew members got hurt mm-hmm. and then somebody who was older than you he died it was yeah. murdered you yeah. know what I mean? and you're just like you don't even at that age you're just like you know it's it's like that was just you didn't know how to feel or act or anything like that you just was just like damn yeah you know, yeah art. it didn't you know what i mean that's flemmo mm. so okay now i want to swing back to school though mm-hmm. academically what did you excel in were you um your inclination to the english and the math or the science and the arts because it's weird when you think about the trajectory of your life and where it led you Tell yeah. me in Donview, did you have a feeling of what you really liked? I I knew I wanted to be in entertainment way before Don. I always knew that was something I wanted to do. I loved, I always loved attention. I always loved the crowd. Mm. I always loved that. But I didn't have anybody to say, you should try that, man. You should, you should, or you know what I mean? Like mm. this story is a story when I was like, um, I don't even know, man. Like it was like six or something. A lady rolled up to me and my brother in 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 Eaton Center. It was like, yo, you want to be in a commercial? You, I want you to be in this commercial. And we just never did it. Like my mom, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I remember we used to do this theater thing in school, like when I was in like George Webster before I went to Fenside. And I mm. loved it. And then even in Donview, I don't know if you guys had it, but every every grade nine had to do a Shakespeare play. Did you guys have to do that? 
I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. 50% of your mark. Oh, my God. It was 50% of your mark. Yeah. And me, me, Johan, Buckwheat, and Wayne, we did, we did Romeo and Juliet. Mm. Murdered it. 50 out of 50. (laughs) We got, we got 100%. So we we had straight up fifty, and and I remember our teacher said she never gave anybody a fifty, but we practiced at um, Donview Library, uh, Donview Brookbanks Library. Brookbanks Library, yeah. Wayne used to work at Brookbanks. Oh, and so Brookbanks, if anybody remembers what Brookbanks looks like, you go inside and you go. There's a downstairs, and mm. there's this big open area. Mm. So they would let us practice there, and we knew our lines like. Back to front. Yeah. And I just remember how much I loved it. I just always loved theater. But as far as excelling in suburbs, I was just an average student. I wasn't great at anything. I wasn't poor at anything. I was just about I to me, it was really about the hang. Yeah. I didn't I didn't want to miss school. Yeah. I missed school. Like, you know, you know, you have kids skip school. I never skip school. Mm. I love being at school because my boys were there. The girls were there. If I miss school, I'm missing something. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we were, when we were in Donju, They everybody knew our little group was just the, we were just the break dancers. And I remember one of our English teachers was like, yo, if you guys want during, um, I think it was lunch, he was like, yo, if you guys don't, you know, lunchtime, we do this more in the winter. He's like, he gave us our, he gives the keys to the room. And we would and we would have our music and we just break dance in a classroom. Mm. Everybody was like, why do they get to do that? But <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were just, you know what I mean? So I never, I hate it. I missed one day of school for something. And I remember if if you see, you'll see it. It was like, I think it was probably like, yeah, a grade when I was in grade eight, I missed one day and they were taking pictures for um they were taking pictures for the yearbook. Yeah. And they came in and they were taking pictures of us, our all the guys breakdancing. And yeah. I wasn't there. And Rick Rick Maloney was there. So yeah. he took a picture with them. I'm like, yo, he's not even in the crew. Yeah, yeah. So I, was, so I was like, I'd never miss it. Our crew, our, da- our break dancing crew was called the Pop City Rockers. Mm. Wow. Yo, you t- yo, you don't know what this means to me, man. Just hearing hearing the firsthand stories from someone older than me in the same area, it's nice to hear because I just knew of you guys and s- to see the faces. But now to hear some of the stories, man. I remember Bucky was good to me, man. I was really younger than him, but He's one I always remember too. Buckwheat was like if you take the analogy of like if you go old school, mm. the cool kid on the block that was Buckwheat. Mm. Was the guy the best athlete, best looking. All the girls loved him. He was yeah. the guy you looked up. He was the guy you wanted to. And I was so proud to be his friend. That's my that was my boy. Like I was in his group. Mm. And yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. why. Yeah. I, I just hit him up too. Like, like I'm trying to get all the old people on Facebook, but um, I just reach out to him and we message each other back. But um, you mentioned something there because I want to touch on this. Influential people in our lives. Mm-hmm. I don't know how your parents were. I want you to just tell me something quick about that. But I want want you to like tell me were there any influential teachers mm-hmm. in in school? So you kind of touched the surface of it. But what bothered me. As a young person, I was, I don't know if you remember this or you knew this, but I could jump high, right? Yeah. Like I could dunk, I could run fast. I, I do remember that. I do remember that you had you had ups. I yes. do remember that. Yes. But I'm telling you something. I did track and I did high jump and I won awards, made it to offsa, all these things. But I didn't have that person pushing me. Mr. Clyde, I don't know if you had Clyde. Oh, you did, right? <laughs> He's a smoke in his office. He's a smoke. Yeah. He's a smoke in his uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, he but, was kind of good to me, man. He always pushed me, but I can't think of any teacher other than high school, but in Donview, that gave you that mentoring. You know. So let me know. Did you have anybody on that side? Not in Donview. Mm. Not in Donview at all. I. I mean, not that I had bad teachers in Donview, 
but we didn't have that teacher in Donview. They just, you know, you were just there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, no one stands out to me in Donview besides Mr. Clyde. Um, were you were you in school when Mr. Farrell was the principal? You know, Vernon Farrell had a reputation, man. He was very well revered in in Toronto. But no, I don't know if you remember Mr. Farrell. No, oh, okay, that was no, after you then. Okay, uh, I, I I can't even remember our principals. I could see their faces, mm. but I can't remember. I remember our vice principal. He was like, "Good Lord, he was hardcore." I remember. I mean, just, you know, it's, it, as a kid, I, I remember <clears throat> one time I was in the hallway and I think it was this girl named Fiona McBain. She walked by and I smacked her in her butt. Like, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. So he grabbed me by my neck. What? In the office. Because <laughs> he was like, yo, that's sexual assault. Yeah. And I was like, I was scared out of my mind. He's like, we're calling your parents right now. I gave him the wrong number. And he was just... <laughs> Just got, I'm like, if phone must be busy. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name, but he was, he was the vice principal, but he was hardcore. Yeah. Like, now, as far as influential, my influential teachers didn't come until like I was in the high school. You know? All right. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it now. But um, you know, it's funny. You just mentioned Fiona McBain. Mm -hmm. Her her brother was in my class, Keith oh, McBain. Right. Yeah, Keith. Yeah. yeah, white, white dude. Um. Yeah. Now, let me so know. Like my little girlfriend in grade, grade five or six or something like oh, that. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. High school now. Mm. Um, You went to George's Henry. I went to Vic Park. But a lot of us cats split, right? Some yeah, people yeah. went. I was talking to my boy who was also on my podcast. We talked about hip-hop. Philly G, Philip Griffith. But you probably know his sister. Of course, might be. Oh yeah, bit. yeah. I know Philip. I know. Yeah, Phillip. you know Phil, right? Jillian, Jillian, is Jillian yes, yes. She was like she was the cutie pie boy. Yeah. <laughs> she was beautiful girl. She's so beautiful. She, but yeah. It was like for us, I was a little sister. You know what I mean? But yeah. She was so and Philip was just he was the little homie as well. Mm. He to, uh, him and uh, Nia. They used to break dance. They used to dance for this rapper. Yeah, we that's what we talked about on the podcast. Don't make name? me mad, son, man. That was the song. Don't make me mad, son. You should have asked them why they came back from Japan. Did you ask them that? No. They were in Japan with him and flew back. I think they got homesick or something. Really? Yeah, we were like, man. That's what I heard. That's the rumor. I got, yeah. I, if I see Phil, I'm going to ask him about that. But one of them got homesick. But yeah. Yeah. He dropped three names. It was Philly, Mikey. Mikey Harrison, and then there was a, a next dude that I didn't know about. But I just remember those two in that video with the dude, man. Yeah. I forgot his name now. Okay. okay. Now, D, in George S. Henry, and I just got to let you know, too, I dropped it before I started recording. Um, Cousin by family, marriage. Um, Steve Bino, who was on my podcast, Into the Arts, he dropped your name. So now you're in high school. What was the friend base like there? And now tell me your influences and what you took. Because I got to tell you something. I don't know when it was, but the first time I heard your name again is on, I think it was Kiss 92.5, I believe. And I heard you and Quinn. I think I heard Quinn's yeah. name. But I don't want to get to that yet. Yeah. Tell me about George S. Henry and your experience. So grade nine like you know the last couple of weeks of grade nine was like the that one that, that was hard because i knew you know everton buckwheat wayne me hugo the five of us were splitting you know i mean we knew that that was that's going to be the that was going to be it for that crew so buck was going to vanier because he wanted to study engineering or mm. something to have like an engineering a shop like cars and stuff like that wayne moved out the neighborhood and went to scarborough and he was going to lamaru mm. everton went to victoria park was going to victoria park hugo was going to victoria park and so at that time me and johan became close 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 mm. you know what i mean because our families knew each other from back in the days type of thing we just ended up being 
tighter than everybody else. You know what I mean? Like you got your crew and then you got the who's the two. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I remember Johan was contemplating going to Victoria Park, and I was like, "Shit, man, don't do that shit. Let's go to, let's go to go Georgia. to Georgia." You know yeah, I mean? but Georgia was, Georgia was considered the goody two shoe education yeah. school, mm. but it was like right by my house. I wasn't going to Victoria Park. Victoria Park felt like it was wild for the night back then. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I was like, <laughs> oh, you know, and Banye had the reputation too. So my parents were like, "Yo, you going to Georgia's Henry?" Mm. So Johan ended up going to George's Henry. And it was interesting because that, again, was the next stage of my life because that summer I spent a lot of time in New York. It's the really first time that my parents were now like, you can go to New York, spend the week, two weeks with your cousin. We're not coming. Mm. So all go with the family. Yeah. You know I mean? Now we're getting old enough. We're like, yo, you go. Mm. And my cousin lived on 193rd and Linden Boulevard, which is very famous for one music video, which is Check the Rhyme. Yeah. So where they shot Check the Rhyme video on that roof, my mm. cousin's house is literally behind that. Mm. I miss being there. My cousins are in that video. I miss being that in that video it, for, by one day because I was traveling the next day to come yeah. to the show. But this time I'm in New York, two tone jeans. You remember two tone jeans? It would be mm. black and gray. It's a it was a more American, but like you've seen in hip hop videos. But back in the days, you used to have these things like two tone jeans, Kango hats. Oh yeah, first time. Yeah, I'm I, I I I'm the first person in that neighborhood who had a bucket Kango hat. Yeah, My cousins brought that shit down. I remember guys from guys from uh, um, from Flemo wanted to jump me for that at a Donby dance, but I was like, yo, you in my hood mm. like, jumping nobody for no <laughs> wait wait let's get this timeline going though you're what year is this now because this is like 86 okay because you're you're telling some important things here right <clears throat> so yeah. hip-hop was starting in this era right and i didn't know this first of all i didn't know guyanese like i'm half guyanese mm. bayesian right and my dad's side they've run brooklyn so I got like over a hundred relatives in Brooklyn. They have a big barbecue every summer, but mm -hmm. they run Brooklyn. I have a few in the Bronx, but I didn't know you're a Guyanese, but now let's continue because this is going to help with the painting, the picture for me on how you got your, your start in a lot of things and experience. Yeah. With well, that's why, that's why I'm hitting up the in between that summer, because again, so you know that me and Johan are going to, 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 to Henry. Mm. I'm in New York that summer, and that's, uh, you know, I'm literally getting my, when I say I got my swag, like, I'm on the block. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean, I'm, I'm just soaking up hip-hop. I'm soaking up New York. Like, that's a different energy in, in the 80s. Yeah. The crack era, you know what I mean? So, mm. you know, my cousin, you know, that, that's, that's, that's a different, that's a different beast. Yeah. And so, but I'm soaking it all up. I'm on Jamaica Ave. I'm getting all the, you know, those are the days where you can't just order shit off the line. Like if you yeah. get it in New York, you probably don't have it in Toronto. Mm. I'm getting mm. my gear. I got my gold link. I got, you know, so now I'm thinking in this summer, okay, so now it's the crew is not the five. It's just the two. Mm. Buckwheat ain't here. Wayne ain't here. The cool guys ain't here. Mm. So I was like, okay. Now, me and Johan could be the new kids on the block. So it was just him and me. And I just reinvented myself from day one. I'm like, I'm not going to be, you know, it's Buckwheat, Wayne, da, 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 then Damon, Kwame. It's not, not going to be like that. I'm I'm going to walk in there like I'm the cool guy. Yeah. So that's why, you know what I mean? Like, like I said, school to me was more the hang. It was the, the social. And so... That was my attitude going into Donview and to George S. Or to sorry to George's Henry. Mm -hmm. And it was again, you know, my brother was already there. He, you know, so I come in, there's Danny's little brother. That's my this is my boy Johan. And me and Johan were like Bati and Bench. We were just like that. Like same classes, same spares. Everything was me and Johan, me and Johan. Like you touch your hand, I'm knocking your face off. Like it's yeah. just, you know, <laughs> yeah. And you know, and 
that's kind of how it established. And, and, da- and George's Henry was another spot that, man, I wouldn't pass that up for anything. Like, you know, I think the two teachers that stood out to me was uh, Ella Huber, Miss Huber. She was our homeroom teacher. She, her and I had a connection from the first day because when she read out my name, she said, Damon. And I said, no, it's Damon. Yeah. Like she had her, she just had a son and his name, she named him Damon. So we just had that, you know what I mean? We had that yeah. connect right there. And she just loved me and your head. Like for our birthday, she'd bring us chocolate bars. Like, yo, she was just, what? we were both born in November. So she always, every, you know, she always checked for us. Mm. And Sue Whiteside was our, um, a gym teacher but she was also our volleyball coach mm-hmm. and you know she was probably she no not probably she was the best volleyball coach coach in all of metro toronto the wow. best wow yeah the best. we had <clears throat> we had the greatest volleyball team we had we had the greatest volleyball team at henry for like three years straight in 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 Metro Toronto in their All region, the yeah. we wow, smashed, smashed. You couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't even tell. We were undefeated years. The only time we lost is because we played in a year up. Yeah, you know what I mean. We played the older kids; they beat us a game. You know what I mean? Yeah, nobody could touch our volleyball team, and that was our life. Like volleyball became our life, and. What helped me in volleyball, and, and you know, you let me know if you want me to just land the plane on this, but no, go on, man. When when I I'm born in November, so I don't know if it's still like this, but even though I'm in grade eleven, yeah, because I'm born in November, I could play still junior for yeah. one extra year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the junior kids now are kids from Don Valley, Pleasant Vi- Pleasant View. I think Pleasant View, right. yeah, Pleasant View. And I can't remember the other school, but these kids were crazy with the volleyball. Mm. And they were when I got there, in grade ten. Our volleyball team was just like I. I started volleyball because again, Mr. Clyde in grade nine. Yeah, Love. Mm-hmm. played in grade ten. Our team was, you know, just average. But when I got to eleven, these when these juniors came in, they were lights out. Yeah, I play with them. So, I was on their team, and we started a dynasty in all of Metro. Nobody wanted to play us because it was just that dirty. We came to Victoria Park and just put on a show. All right, all right, take it easy, take it easy. Put on a show. <laughs> Because the crazy thing about that, then now it goes back to the whole hip hop thing. Mm. Especially this one year, man. This one year, we had our starting lineup. There was like four or five of us at any given moment would be all black on our volleyball team. And back Mm. then, you know, not many black kids were playing volleyball. It was like, you know, me, like you see, like in the international games. But I remember, man, we'd go to these schools in the West End and stuff like that. And they would just, these white boys would just, these white kids would just look at us like, ah. Yeah. Like guys with their, with their, their Nikes and their yeah, track yeah. suits and they playing their <laughs> hip hop music. Yeah. But when we get out there on the course where these kids were just doing bump set spike, we're doing bump set tandem. Yeah. Set roofing, like it was crazy. And me, with my attitude, I was talking shit to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I played I played volleyball like I was playing basketball. Like mm. it was just unconventional, like how we did it. But <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, no, I, I don't want to run on, but yeah, uh, Henry was that was that was the start of something for sure. No, I'm glad you touched on that though, because I was a you know I got the vertical, so volleyball was my sport too. We played with Al, you know Albert Johnson. You must know that name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I played with Albert, this guy Dan Clark, Steve Chigacos. We had a mixture of of it wasn't only black, but we had Dino Bonos, all the all the killer hitters. But when I went to VP, I'm talking about Donview first. But when I went to VP, Hen, like you said, 
we went to Henry. We got smoked, man. We a lot of teams smoked us. York Mills, Vanier. We got smoked, man. So our team was so so, but the grade above us with Mike Chisholm and some of the names I can't remember. Chisholm. Yeah, you remember Chisholm, man. Holy smokes. Chisholm. Yeah. <laughs> I played with Chisholm. I played, played with Chisholm, Chisholm on a rep. I played played with Chisholm on a rep team before. He had oh. up. Oh. Mm. Chisholm could jump, boy. But see, Chisholm's problem was like, not to say he wasn't coordinated, but there was something about his technique. He didn't have that Basketball, yeah, but when it came to volleyball, it volleyball is kind of like a rhythm. It's a smooth rhythm. Yeah, you know I mean? and like I wasn't a hitter. I was I I played six back. Okay, so yeah. you, you, I dare you to try to put it by me. I would go after anybody because I realized where my skills were. I yeah. realized I wasn't a hitter. I realized I wasn't the center, so I had to I had to find out what I'm good at. Yeah, it was, it was defense. Mm. You know what I mean? So I played weak side. And so, you know, I don't know if you know Andrew White, his daughter. Yeah. Andrew White first went to Vanya and then he moved over to there's a guy, two guys. They're probably one of the they were probably like the best volleyball players in our neighborhood area, mm-hmm. like the vicinity from Victoria Park to Vanya. It was Andrew White and Clayton Karambokas. Mm-hmm. Andrew White's daughter, she plays on Team Can, uh, not, not Team Can. Yeah, she plays on Team Canada's volleyball team. Wow! But mm-hmm. Andrew White was probably one of the most feared hitters because if Andrew wanted to, he could hit you in your face. And if he hit you in your face with that ball and get that six pack, six pack. I used to tell Andrew. I, I used to be like, I'd be on the front row with Andrew, just to mess with kids. I'm like Andrew, that kid right there, hit him, get him, get him. And Andrew, like, you know what I mean? Andrew had these, he had these bloodshot red eyes. He never used to comb his hair, ashy, just, and my, like, he was one of them, he was one of them 17 year olds that looked like he was like a 20, like a man. Yeah. <laughs> when he hit, Jesus. He had that precision, eh? That accuracy. Whew. He was man. dirty. Clayton was great too, but he just had a bad attitude. He didn't give his damn. Mm. But yeah, but volleyball, Chisholm, that, that brings me back, boy. Yeah, Ch- I got to tell you, before we move on, yeah, Chisholm was my mentor because when I came in, remember, we came in at grade 10. So everybody knew each other. And then we're my crew, we're new. But once people saw I had that up, but I had the older people. My brother Riggs was there, Greg Simon, all of them were there, right? But once people saw my vertical, when I tried out for the team, it was a wrap, right? And then Chisholm was my mentor, man. We played on the same senior team in his last year, but that was that it's was too good. bad. It's too bad. Like I know in that neighborhood, there was a lot of young black kids that if somebody said, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna really teach you volleyball. That's what I'm saying, man. Lights out. Yeah. But you know, I gotta tell you something, Nate. I'm only five seven, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why people were impressed with the vert. But when I went to Seneca College. I went to the first tryout and I and I didn't go back because I was like, these guys are like six four, six five. And I was I was intimidated. I was like, I can't play. Yeah. You know what I mean? I so I stopped. Off, I got kicked off the Seneca team. You, oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. So that's the next step, though. Yeah. So Georgia Senry, you had your influential teachers. We talked about my cousin that you're good, good friends with Steve Bino. You <laughs> talked about some of your experiences. Post secondary now, are you telling me you went to Seneca College? Yeah, because like, like, I mean, another great thing about Henry was we had a we had a that's because I played soccer too most of oh. my life. Okay, I played on, uh, you know, I played midfield for the most of, most of the time, but my last year or two years, I didn't want to. I wanted to play goalie, mm. and it was the best time of my life, and we won. We won Metro's. We were Metro champs for our area. And um, so I was thinking, and again, it's like, you know, this is why it's so important to have people look out for you. Back then, you just really didn't know counselors or none. Because I was trying to think of like, okay, should I try to go to the States and, you know, go to like Michigan and play goalie. I knew I could, I, I knew if I had a, had a chance to go out there, I'd have probably made squads yeah. as, good as, as a goalie because I was fearless. But I didn't do, didn't, couldn't do that. 
I was starting the acting thing. Uh, you know, that was I was getting that bubble then. I was starting the I was rapping at that time. I did stand up. I you was, did. Yeah, I did stand up. I did I did stand up at um that's yeah, I did stand up um at like, you know, our schools, you know, those talent contests. Yeah, yeah. I did that shit, man, and I had the crowd be I kill. And I was like, and and I remember this one, this one white boy, he was like, yo, let's go to Yuck Yuck. So like, do that, yuck. And I just never did it. I just never, I was like, ah, right, what? Go that. I so I never went that route. But but what I'm saying is I had that the entertainment bug is now within me. Mm. But I didn't know what to do with it. And mm. so parents was like, and I always floated the idea of like policing and stuff like that. Yeah. My parents were obviously like, yo, go get a, you know, you got to go to school, post-secondary, get a job, da, 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 live the life. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Seneca for law enforcement. Oh. And so, yeah. And so I I tried out and played for the volleyball team there. But mm. the volleyball team there was, it, it wasn't good. And I just came from a team that never lost. Yeah. I play, and you know, I'm seeing guys, I'm like, what is it? I had the worst attitude, bro. Yeah. Attitude, to the point where the coach is like, yo, B, you out of here. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? He's like, nah, B, you, you got to go. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah, Seneca studied law. I went there for the two years, did law enforcement, you know, you know, trying to do the police thing, but... Mm. When I went there, like one of the things for Seneca that you had to do for law enforcement is in the summer, you know, you had to go get hours. So I was a security guard or whatever, whatever. Most kids, because Seneca that I went to was King City. Oh, you went to King City. Okay. The only, the only reason why I went to the campus out here in Scarborough um, or North York. Newnham, was, right? Newnham, Newnham Finch. Yeah. Yeah, because they had a gun range. Mm. You know that? I didn't know that. At a gun range, and we used to go and pop off in there. Mm. So I was part of our class, and then obviously sports, so volleyball. So one of the things you had to do is get this job and someone to get these numbers. And everybody that went to that all usually got your got your hours at Wonderland. Oh, so the first year, my friends, they all people that I knew, they all went applied i missed no one told me nothing i ain't had no job yeah second year i get a job at wonderland and wonderland is really the time where i was like oh i got to be an entertainer i got i can't i can't not i can't i can't be a police officer mm. i can't do nothing i gotta entertain it. and i'll explain to you why mm -hmm. So when I was going to school, it was around the time, when I was going to Seneca College doing law, law enforcement, it was around the time Rodney Rodney King got beat up. 92, you're not, now you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. So I'm in 90? 92. It's, yeah, it's early, nine, yeah, it's like, yeah. It's yeah. Part, I mean, yeah, 18, 90, yeah, early 90s, whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm in class. And all these white boys are making excuses why Rodney King should have got beat down. Mm. And it was like me and a couple other black kids, one of the indigenous kids, we were just like, what? Like, we couldn't understand how they couldn't see that. Like, how you you see what's on TV. You see that, right? Mm. How could you tell me that, just, oh, well, I heard he had cocaine in this thing, so they should beat him like that? Oh, I heard he tried to run from them, so he should be, you know what I mean? And so mm. I was like, this guy's a mental. Mm. And working at Canada's Wonderland, I used to be, the first year I was there, I was in uniform. So I had the stupid security guard hat on and looked like a rent-a-cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember going into the lunchroom and these white boys would be eating lunch and they'd pop in a videotape of 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 cops. Mm. Remember show cops? Yeah. They'd be eating, watching cops. Mm. Not that it's on TV. They literally at home and they tape cops to watch it. Like you would watch the Cosby show. I'm yeah. like, what are you guys doing? Yeah. Something about them. And then I remember we went to this one party. 
we shouldn't have went to this one party, but we went to this one party where we was in Seneca College. And, you know, it's just white boys, beer, and it's a white boy party. And this is out north. Yeah. And my boy, Raw Maynard, must have, you know, the keg and white boy didn't like him taking no drinks. Mm. Call nigga and this and that. And we were outnumbered. Like, I swear to God, we was just like yelling and screaming. We went back to the truck. We went back to the, the, the ride. This girl I was with. It was so hectic. This girl I was with, somebody slammed the door on her finger. We were trying to get out of there that quickly. Yeah. White boys were jumping off the roof to come at us. We tear out. We go. We go. Next day at school, we catch one of the white boys. We were just like, all right, what's up now? Mm -hmm. And that it, it, things like that just, you know, it was just messing with my head. So I'm working at Canada's Wonderland in the summer, and now I'm doing... Uh, I, I see this one woman that works there and she's a plain clothes security. Okay. She's she just wearing her regular clothes and she catching people steal. Mm -hmm. You know, like the undercovers at the, the malls. In the stuff. malls, in the stores. Yeah. I'm like, word? All right, I'd like to try that. She's like, okay, come try it. And I ended up being really good at it. Because I'd oh. be in my hip hop gear. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a the next thing you know, you steal in front of me. You're like, yeah, dad, I got my shit. I'm like, yeah, get your shit. Come outside. I'm like, bow with the badge. And they're like, what? Catch you. So yeah. my boss recognized I was really good at it. So he said, dad, that uniform, do this. And it was just me. And then I formed a crew. To this day at Canada's Wonderland. Yeah. I'm playing calls crews, like a group of guys who do playing calls. I started that. Wow. I started that in the 90s, early 90s. I got a kid named Sean Sport and all these people. And one of the things we would do, again, I'm sorry for rambling, but. No, I, I want to hear it. One of the things we would do as plain close security is when celebrities come to Toronto, they want to check out the park. Uh, me and my crew would mm -hmm. take them around because we take them behind the scenes to the ride behind the scenes. So if people were trying to like get autographs, we yeah. knew how to get away pretty fast. You couldn't find us. We could mm -hmm. get out. Um, I did like the, the, the power Rangers, the original power Rangers, yeah. all of the dem guys for the day, taking them on the rides. Home girl. Remember the, remember the yellow Ranger, the girl. Yeah. I was with her before she died. Oh, I remember she, she died, died in the car, car, car crash, but I was with Walter Jones in the next one, the black Ranger and the red Ranger. Mm. Next time I'm there, TLC, it's me and T boss. Whoa. Whoa, T bar is going up to the rides. I'm taking T bar to the rides. She's on the rides. Next thing, I got um, Janet Jackson. Wait, what? Janet Jackson. Wait, what? Take her on the rides. Take her on the ride. It was when she had the rhythm, rhythm nation. No, mm. what's this the one where she was like in the indigenous dress? That's not rhythm nation. That's uh, damn it. Anyways, that's when she was looking just crazy janet jackson she used to wear the in she was the I, I can't remember the song but she did it with mc light because it was her and mc light there and i remember sitting M there mc light was there too yeah yeah yeah. so i remember i'm sitting there and she i can't remember i think it's mind buster she's going on a mind buster she got all the security she's sitting there waiting for the ride going i'm looking at it, i'm like oh my god like i had a crush on you since she was in good times i'm thinking everything everything that janet jackson is going through my mind while i'm staring at her she's right there and i'm staring i'm staring staring and you know when you stare at something you don't even know you're staring at something yeah that's how i was <laughs> and then janet jackson turns and looks at me and i i did one of these i went oh <laughs> <laughs> and she just smiles and laughs cuz i just fully got caught out staring <laughs> But that was dope. And then another day. Wait, I got it. This is this is what I was expecting from you. We haven't even scratched the surface yet. But I got to ask you something, though. What was the fascination with this? I know Wonderland is a great place to go with all this stuff. But are you telling me stars wanted to visit Wonderland? Yeah, man. I'm telling you, bro. Like one time, Nicole Kidman, she's shooting a movie here. This is when she's married to Tom Cruise. She's shooting a movie here in Toronto. Tom Cruise wants to come and hang out with his daughter, his first adopted daughter. Me and Tom Cruise. Me, Tom Cruise, and my crew. Whole day, like five hours, B. I got a picture with me and Tom Cruise just hanging. Me and Tom Cruise were on 
the, the, there used to be a ride called Top Gun. Yeah, remember that. Me and Tom Cruise sit. I'm in this seat. Tom Cruise is in that seat. And I'm <laughs> laughing with. I'm just like, yo, we in the Top Gun and da 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 da. Salt and pepper. Oh, all day with salt and pepper. I still to this day I have. The, it was uh, the very necessary tour. I still have the jacket. They gave me a jacket. I got a jacket. Yo, that. So when I was there, Paul Abdul, like everybody would come to this thing. And I remember just being there, especially mm -hmm. when it came to radio. I'd watch all these people. And I'm like, that's what I want to do. Wait, so Kwame, tell me something, though. This is interesting, man. You're telling me this is even before you, before. Fat TV, I think it before is, that. which I want you to tell me about. Before Fat TV, before Kiss, yeah. before all these names I'm going to ask you about, you yeah. met a lot of these people all at Wonderland. That's, that's that's what kind of made me want to do what they did because I just, their auras were so cool. Like, you know, I just, I remember doing things with radio stations. They'd have radio days at the, at the, um, at the park. Tarzan Dan would be there. And Remember that. Yeah. I see Chris Shepard, all these people, and I'm like, man, I want to do something like that. Like, you know what I mean? And I, you know what I mean? I just wanted, I, you know, and I was doing music at the time. I was just, you know, but this was my, obviously I had to work and get, you know, get paid and stuff like that, but that was it. And then. Wait, so this was before, you said you got pictures with certain people, right? But you know how it's crazy now, you whip out your phone. But back in the days, you're talking about People had to have a camera, man. I'll kill you. With, I'll, uh, I, when we get to when we get to the fat TV conversation, yeah, I'll tell you a story that will blow your mind. But yeah, this is the but this is the time with you had to have a camera. So the Tom Cruise thing is like that's why I don't have a picture with me and Janet. That's why I don't have a picture with me and Salt and Pepper and all. You know what I mean? Mm. But after the day with Tom Cruise. Tom is like, hey, do you guys want a picture? Yeah. And his assistant, she took the picture. And we're like, yeah, okay, well, because our, our, when we worked security, we had Kodaks. Okay. You, you book somebody, you take their picture, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, Polaroid. The, the Polaroid one, right? Polaroid, sorry. Yeah. I got mm -hmm. that right away. But mm -hmm. we, you know, we didn't want, no one was going to get it and bring it back. And it's just been too inconvenient. He's Tom, Tom takes pictures like, yo, I'll make sure you guys get this. We're like, bullshit. Yeah. I'm never going to see that picture again. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks later, bro, at my work, my boss called me and he's like, one for you, one for you, one for you. <laughs> yeah. It talked to me. I, I, I'll, I'll pull it up. Yeah, man. yeah, because there's a bunch of names I want to see if you remember your first interaction with them. But mm -hmm. it's crazy that um, we were in that time where you had to have a Polaroid was good because you get it right away and fan it off and then you see the picture. Yeah. But a lot of pictures you had to develop. They so, develop. Yeah. So it's crazy that you're telling me this, man. Crazy. But I would also, even when I was working, even like, it's, I mean, even with Fat TV days. Mm -hmm. Early radio days, you still had to have, you know, you had your phone. But the thing with me, and I remember my boss at Fat TV, Eldon Maskell, he would laugh at me because he'd be like, yo, you always with this camera. You always with this camera. Because my dad was a photographer. My dad loved photography. Mm -hmm. So I always had, there was always cameras in my house. Yeah. So I would be, even in high school, I'd come in and I'd be taking pictures of my friends and stuff like that. I wish I did it. I wish I did that in junior high school, but my point is, it's like I used to always have a camera. So I took all, like, I got pictures with, I made sure, because I always thought that one day, you know, one day I want to be able to look back at it and I want my son to be able to, like, yo, my dad, yeah. my dad was, my dad knew all, met, met all of them peoples, you know what I mean? So you know what's crazy? You, mm -hmm. You're telling me you had the foresight. So you 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 just took one of my questions, and I'm glad you said it ahead yeah. of time. But one of my questions was having that foresight for things. So sometimes I talk with my boys, and I remember we used to put hockey cards in our spoke. You're talking about a Wayne Gretzky card. Oh, and all I this. still have my hockey cards from the 70s. Wow. My dad used to, my, when we were kids, like five, six, four, them years. Yeah. Remember hockey cards used to have the gum? Yeah. The nasty gum, yeah, that stick gum, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, and remember, <laughs> remember back in public school, you used to do the thing with the wall, and you put the yes yeah. against the wall, and you try to 
like gambling. Of course. My dad always said to me, he said, don't lose these hockey pads. Mm. I got bags of card. I got I got a Pat Quinn hockey card. Pat Quinn's known as a is a coach. Yeah, I yeah. Got I got Gretzky cards. I got yeah, man. I collected all of that stuff. So this is what I'm saying now. Oh my gosh. So you had the foresight to take the pictures. So you knew. That's why I, it's kind of vexing. I had my camera when I did stand up, right? And I used to film things, but I didn't take pictures of me and Russell, me and John Paul. I didn't do this, right? Because I didn't have the foresight to say, hey, I want to look back on this. I have some pictures, but I like what you did. I always did that because I knew one day, like, for example, like. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like, already posted that one, man. That's his first, that's his first album. Mm. Who's going to have it? You, you could say you met Jay-Z, whatever, but you can't tell me you met Jay-Z during his first album and have a picture to prove it. Only yeah. certain people. <laughs> I took pictures of everybody. Any, I wanted to make sure that I documented everything as much as I possibly can. But yeah, Wonderland, that was the thing. You know, that really, that was the time. You know, and then I think the biggest thing for me is when my brother passed. My brother passed in... My brother passed in 95. So he was 26. I was 25. And he never wanted me to be a cop. He used to always be on me about writing and working and doing da 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 mm. I don't know if you ever knew my brother or met my brother back in the days. But oh, man. Mm. my brother was the big homie around there and around that neighborhood, too. Um, one of the kindest people that anybody, you know, he was just a good dude. And from that day, I was just like, I ain't doing nothing. I remember I, I went to I went to an interview at Metro Police. I think they felt sorry for me because my mom worked at Metro. And she was always like, how can I not get my kid in? Like, yeah. why, is, why, why is there a freeze and I still can't? I've been working here for like 20 something years. So they finally gave me an interview, man. I sat at that interview, leaned back. I didn't give a shit. I made yeah. sure I made the worst answers ever so that they could say, nah, he's yeah. not qualified. But that made me go get an agent. And the first agent I get, got, her name was Sharon Gould. And she got me Fat TV in, in, in uh, 90, 96. 96? Wow, you jumped there. So hip-hop was already on its way. You're talking about Big Daddy Kane and Pac okay. and Biggs and wu -Tang. Everything's already started. So yeah. tell me about the Fat TV though, like the whole process. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the process was basically, like I said, Wonderland I'm working, but even mm. at that same time, I am still got my foot in the hip-hop world just trying to figure out what's what. I don't know what, but I'm just trying to figure out and I, I actually around that time I'm writing for Mishy with Mishy. Um, I'm point I'm on point with Mishy, you know, doing shows with her and stuff like that. So a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And then this guy named Apple. Um I used to he used to have a hip hop shop on Young Street. And I used to roll with him. He was the first promoter to bring all of Wu Tang to Toronto. Mm. I was on I was with him. So I remember going to Syracuse the night. Took, we were up for 24 hours, brought them back to Toronto, and then they had the tour, and they had the show. But the, I just went for this audition, and Elder Masco was there. They were telling they wanted to do this hip-hop style show because much music was, you know, Rap City, they did their thing, but they kind of were like, they were still shying away from certain things, you know what I mean? Mm, okay. And this guy Elden, he was just like, I want to I want to kill it. Now, Elden Maskell's mom, his mom's name is very, she's very influential in Toronto Black community history. Her name is Beverly Maskell. Do you remember? That Golden, sounds familiar. Remember Golden Key Barbershop? On where Bathurst? was it? Golden Key on Bathurst, right mm. at the Bathurst Station. So that's no. where I used to get my hair cut. A lot okay. of us, <laughs> instead of going to cut, like cut creators, obviously cut creator and all that back yeah. then. But when you first came in, that was the place you got your hair cut. And Masculine Beauty Supply, she's the first black woman to really take care of the black women that came from the West Indies. Mm -hmm. that, so that's her son. So he liked my vibe. And he was like, yo, Bong, let's go. We do the show. You know, and for two years, 
we just kind of broke all the rules. We were on CFMT. The great thing about us being on CFMT and for us was because we we uh, we were scheduled on after um, Jerry Springer. Okay. Everybody watched Jerry Springer. Yeah. When you finish watching Jerry Springer, you're like, oh, shit. The commercial for this rap show? Stay and watch that. Mm. So, yeah, we did that for two years. And, like, that was kind of, like, my first introduction to interviewing, being in the mix. You know what I mean? And, like, we went to Miami for How Can I Be Down? That, that time I had a really cool friendship with Buster Rhymes at that time. I always see him at events and stuff like that. And mad love for, with him. Namageni mm. um, was on Much Music. She, she did a little stint with us on Fat TV. Her name was, she, she called herself Mary back then. But, um, you know, that was the right place at the right time, man. You know what I mean? Man. Yeah, the right time. I I wanted to know that too. Like you, you just dropped the queen of hip hop, Canadian hip hop, Michi Me. I wanted to know like the impact and the influence you had on her because I thought I read something. I don't know if she influenced you a lot or, or there's something behind it. But Michi's the queen to me of um, Canadian hip hop, bro. Yeah, I mean, I remember listening to CKLN on a Saturday, and Ron Nelson mm -hmm. had played Elements of Style, Michi Me and Karis One, and I was just like, who is this? She's from Toronto. I had, The first rap song I wrote was mm -hmm. like a love letter to Michi. Dear Michi Me, I want to rap to you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, was <laughs> I remember going like Caravana Saturday night concert hall, Oh my what? Yeah. What? Up at the top, Mishimi battling um was Davy DMX guy. You can look if people are listening, you can look up Davy DMX. Mm. And oh, is it I can't remember. Anyway, this guy brought this girl out to battle Mishi. And she was wearing like it looked like a mink coat and stuff, you know what I mean? And Michi said something like, that ain't mink, that's fur, or that's rabbit fur, or something like that. Call her shit rabbit. People when yo, I was like, I'm in love with that girl right there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So she was like that celebrity from afar. I remember being in New York. And, you know, back in the days, these kids don't do it now, probably, but you know when you used to cut out the write on magazines and put the yeah. rappers. My cousin had a picture of Michi on it. I'm like, yo, she's from Toronto. He's like, what? Uh, you know, and and just it just by happenstance, years later, we just kind of connected. I told her that I rapped and I had a partner in our rap. This guy named Danny, who actually lived in Parkwoods, he was a really good rapper. This guy named Danny. Mm -hmm. Danny da Danny Morris. Okay. He was like, you you wouldn't know him, but he was couple of years older than me but he was deadly yeah best rapper in our neighborhood so we just started working with her writing and stuff like that things didn't pan out but me and her always stayed cool and she'd be like i i just be her hype man like me and her were just chemistry was just like our energies were the same and you know she took me on tour with her and we opened up for public enemy and um we went to dominica with public enemy and we just, you know, it was, yeah, she influenced me in like, in the sense that like, she allowed me to be on stage to see what that's like and how that felt like, you know what I mean? Not to the scale that I always dreamt, but. Yeah. Um, but for, for someone like you, like, so coming from Toronto, cause you were in that pivotal moment of hip hop. Like that was like the staple, right? That the late eighties, early nineties. How was <laughs> it for you being a Toronto kid? Because I could drop names here, man. Like Buster Rhymes, Chuck D. I seen all the pictures of you with them. Did you understand what was going on? Because we were talking about the foresight with taking yeah. the pictures. But did you understand what was going on with hip hop? Or was it just a thing back then? And no one could understand what it could get to, like where we are now. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think I had, I, I was like, oh, this is going to be the biggest genre ever since, you know, da, 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 da. But I knew that the energy of hip hop was, you couldn't match it. 
And it was one of those, I'm so glad I was born in 1970. I'm so glad I'm here right now because, oh, there's that kid named Puffy. Oh, there's Buster Rhymes. Um, there's a boot camp click. There goes Queen Latifah walking up the street in Miami. We're at Prince's nightclub and uh, and Redman is walking me in. Yeah. So I'm at I'm at I'm at I'm at I'm at um this thing called Black Expo. Mm -hmm. This is probably I can't remember maybe 91 or 90 or whatever. I'm walking down the street with my cousin. I'm like, yo, that's that kid Red Man. Mm. Now when I say that, I, I'm not saying like you all know that that's that kid Red Man. The only way you know that that's Red Man is if you recognize him in the scenario video where there's a little, there's a montage of faces and yeah. one stops at it and says Red Man. Mm. Doesn't have an album out. All he has is a mixtape and people can look this up. Just just go on YouTube and look up uh, look up uh, Bismarcky and Red Man um, Barbecue Freestyle. And, and back then, you had the mixtapes in New York, again, that you had to ship to Toronto. If you didn't get it, you didn't have it. Mm -hmm. But the mixtape that was going on right there was from this guy named Ike Love, who's another Queens native. And it was the freestyle on it. So we all know who Bismarck is, but he brings up this kid, Red Man. And he says some stuff. I'm like, who is that? Yeah. I was so blown away by this. I, he was just, We were just... Always rewind it, rewind it, rewind it. Then we see the check the rhyme video and we say, Oh, that's him. So now we know what he looks like. Yeah. Black Expo. Everybody's at Black Expo, like, you know, Red Alert's there. That's where Red Alert, when the first time I seen Red Alert uh, live on location, mm. I was like, Oh, I'd love to do that, which is radio. We yeah. get to that. Yeah. So I'm walking out, walking down. I'm like, I see this, I see this um, Black Pathfinder. And I say to my cousin, I'm like, yo, that's like that red man. We roll up to him. We go, yo, you're red man. He's like, yeah. It's like your tape is the, the mix it, blah, blah, blah. You got to come out with an album, bro. Like, what's going on? He's like, yo, we almost finished. It's going to drop. We exchange, like, we exchange, but well, he gave me his pager number. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, yo, again, his foresight. I said, yo, give me your autograph. He says, what? I'm like, give me your autograph. He's like, yo, and he was with James Ellis, which is a, a manager famous manager he goes yo this kid. it's like ain't nobody asked me for an autograph i'm like well i've got the first one so he signed it and i've got red man's very first autograph that he's never he never wrote no, never signed an autograph and that same day i met um gina renee remember jane that sounds yeah that sounds yeah funny. what's that song uh yeah i know what you're talking thing, about group thing those girls yeah so yeah I, yeah, yeah. I, I saw, yeah. So again, it's uh, my my point is that time, like holy crap, man! Any given moment, I remember playing dice outside um a Five Dogs house. Five Dog lived the bro. My 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 bro, my cousin lived. If you watch the check the if you watch the check the rhyme video, mm -hmm. and you see him start, that's like that's his house. That was his mom's house. My cousin lived the block. He lived in this. I loved lived up here. So we used to play dice out front there. Fife would come out, my cousin would be like, yo, what's up, Fife? And I'd be like, oh, what are you shit? My brother, my cousin would be like, yo, relax, man, relax. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, yo, but, you know, you're trying to you're like, yo, that's, that's Fife dog from freaking, uh, you want to go and roll up and jump on him. And my cousin's like, yo, relax. So I'm not bringing you out here no more. <laughs> We're playing dice, and this guy, and I was actually pretty good at dice. Mm. This guy, this guy's walking by, and he's got a, a bag. And inside the bag, he's got t-shirts like t-shirts, bro, t-shirts, t-shirts. And 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 um, he's showing it looks dope. It says for us, by us. And I'm like, yo, if I roll my six, uh, let me get that, let me get the shirt. Boom, boom, boom. I win. I'm like, give the guy the money. I got the shirt. For us, by us. And so these guys can't use the name for us, by us, because when they're trying to sell it, they're like, it's too urban. And da 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 da. They change it to Fubu. Fubu. Oh my. Oh, Mazdan was on the streets. I think it was Damon. He was on the streets, just right place at the right time. We used to drive by LL Cool J's grandmother's house. What? what? And it'd be like Mercedes, Corvette, all this stuff, man. So that's what's in my head. And 
now that I'm doing fat TV and all this stuff, I'm just like, I'm just soaking up everything and just being so thankful that I'm getting to see all of these things and being in these moments. And so before wait, you so your your face, you were you were known then. You were known by a lot of these rappers. I think, I think they would have, yeah, back then they because I was always around, I would be right. doing this interview. So like like I was able to like I would I was able to like page um uh like Red Man or if I ran into Buster Rhymes, it'd be like, hey, what's it would be, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was later now, like I remember I remember years later, I um Red Man was at this he was performing in Alberta and I was working on a radio uh, in Alberta and I don't have his number. I didn't have his number. Obviously I hadn't seen him in some two years, but I brought the autograph. So he was at the bar and I just went, put it in front of him. He looked at it, he goes, what the? I was like, he's like, no way. I'm like, yeah, man. I'm like, how you doing, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. That was, that was, that was, that, that was special. Yeah. You know what? Before I'll give you that story before you go on, but I'm in uh, Roywood, and so you remember where the Masonettes are. You come out, if you make a right, you jump on the Don Valley Parkway. Right. Go to the left. Got to go by you guys. No, the oh, other way around. Not Fairview. Okay. Not underground to George S. No, no, no. I'm saying like you get to that corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn right. Get jump on the highway. Turn yeah. left. That's Parkwoods, Parkwoods Plaza. Right, right. Remember they used to have that gas station yep. on the right side and stuff? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so around then, I used to have a, uh, a CRX. Mm-hmm. I used to have a bad habit of um, not filling it up with gas. Yeah. I get, I get to the corner. I'm going to this concert. Big concert's happening. This MC is hot. Everybody knows he's the truth. I'm going to the concert. I'm looking at the gas gauge. I'm like, damn it. I'm going to be late. Mm. But I got to get gas. Because like, as soon as I get by Eglinton, I'm done. I turn to the left. I go to the gas station. I start pumping the gas. Black SUV is right there in front of me. Guy's leg is hanging out the SUV. And his leg is like this. I said, holy shit, that guy is huge. So curiosity makes me look. And I can see the side of his face right here. And it's black. It's tar. I mean, that's a big black. Man. And I look, I go, Biggie? And he looks at me, he's like, what's up, dog? I go, what? I'm like, Biggie Smalls? He's like, yo, what's up? He's like, you coming to the concert? I'm like, I'm coming to the concert. Well, what are you doing here? In Run Parkwoods. I could, this, this is my hood. And he's like, yo, we're getting gas and we're about to head to the show. And I'm like, oh man, your album, da 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 da. da. Everybody drives off, and I'm just like, nobody is gonna believe me. Nobody's going to believe that Biggie Smalls was in the hood, our neighborhood. Where we grew up, that yeah. gas station, he was right there. I swear to God, bro. I oh. swear, to you. <laughs> swear to you. Yo, I can't take this. I, I knew I was going to hear stories, but I, I didn't know it was going to be like this. And you know what's crazy? Yeah. I was going to ask you, because you were in that era, two things I wanted to know. Uh-huh. Did you meet Biggie? Yeah. And did you meet Pac? I met Biggie, never got to meet Pac. But I mm. was supposed to be, yeah, and I was I was supposed to be, my producer, Eldon, was at that party when Big left and died. He was there. Oh, but, the vibe I, party. He was there. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I was supposed to be, I didn't, you know, I had no money. So, like, you know what I mean? And they weren't paying me, you know what I mean? So it would have been on my own dime to go out there to, you know, but. Yeah, never met Pac. I always wanted to meet Pac, but I thought that if I, I thought I, ne- I never thought I would get a good vibe from Pac. I always had this thing about him. I was like, I don't think I'd want to meet him. I think he, he and I, he, he wouldn't like me, or you know what I mean. I always had that feeling about his energy. But I met Big. That was that was that was special. That's nuts. You know what's crazy? I don't know what year you're talking about here, but 
I remember my boy Jamal was going to uh, Ryerson at the time. Mm-hmm. And then in the 90s, Biggie was down here. So I don't know if it's the same time yeah, you talk same about. And, yeah. they, and, they, and they and they bum rushed the stage and stole the turntables. Okay, so this is the, the same. Only time. That was the only time. Mm. He was here once. He was here once, did one show. And it was it was madness. Mm. There's a video, 100 Miles, shout out to, um, you know, Gary and them guys, 100 Miles. He has a video of it. He has a video of Biggie at the show. And it was just, it was the craziest thing ever, man. But Wow. Yeah, yeah and he was down at Young Street. So the contrast, man, you were at Fat TV, but you didn't have much music with my boy. What's my boy's name with the dreads again? My memory's getting bad. Master yes, Master T. I just saw Master him T. Him. Okay. Um, they were doing their <laughs> thing with Electric Circus and and my, bringing everyone, reggae artists down, everybody. And then Caravan, as you mentioned, was crazy at the time. Mm-hmm. Let me know now. Like, you're now in in the know with all this stuff. You're working at Fat kinda, TV. Yeah, I kind of am, but I'm still kind of an outsider, man. Because I always felt like that. Okay. You know, I knew I knew all the, the players and all the people that were there, but I wasn't the go. I was never a go to guy. It mm. was always weird to me. I was never like in our neighborhood. You know what I mean? Love. Yeah. But I always had, felt like I always had to fight for. I always had to fight. I always yeah. had to fight for that respect and that you know, which is all right. You know what I mean? Because I, you know, Fat TV was an independent show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't much music, so everybody's trying to much music. Ours people wanted to get on our show, but no one really cared to really bang down the doors like they would bang down their doors you know and I get it and so it's like because so we had two years there stopped in it stopped in 98 and it's too bad i think eldon should have stuck it out but he didn't want to he felt like he was paying a lot of money to mm. put that show on and he wasn't getting any return yeah so businesses don't make no return and you know it takes the time mm. right he stuck it out, we would have got bigger names and we'd have got thing, you know what I mean? We'd have got those sponsorship, but you know, should coulda, woulda. But that brings me to like that brings yeah, I know the crazy thing about working at Fat TV is I used to work undercover security at like Kmart. Yeah. Time. In I, Parkway I, Mall? Yeah, man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I would catch kids stealing and shit like that. I usually used to wear a hat because I had the braids and shit like that. And I used mm. to wear the hat low. And kids would look at me and be like, yo, I've seen you before somewhere. I'm like, you ain't seen shit. <laughs> Shut them out, you know what I mean? You ain't seen nobody. Yeah, yeah. You know that show, Fat TV? Nah, B, that's my cousin. You know, I had to be like that. <laughs> but that takes me to, like, you know, again. And then after that, I stopped working plain clothes stuff. And then... I started working, um, I worked for, I worked, I, I, I was looking for a job and I started working collections. Mm. And so like I got the job, but you had to go to do this two week process. And just around that time, Quinn, DJ Short. DJ Short, yeah. Knowing that, like, obviously, my name in the, the in the in the neighborhood and everything is bubbling from Fat TV, and I'm known as that guy, host guy. So, like, started I I'd be in Miami too a lot, yeah. And Miami had a different style of getting on the mic. So we kind of skipped over this, but a lot of things would supplement my income is I would host parties at clubs. Guys oh. would call me in, and I'd work with starter starting from scratch is the yeah. first person to ever give me the mic and let me do oh, my show. Okay. And I used to bring, I used to bring this energy like, like Miami, Miami. When they get on the mic, it's like peanut butter jelly. Yeah, yeah. And I used to just do, I used to do that stuff and just get people hyped. Mm. And I would go on like Baby Blue was doing their thing. Remember those are the days of Baby Blue and right. you know King Turbo and all that. And so I would be like, okay, how am I gonna, you know what? I'm gonna grab the mic, but I'm gonna stand on the stage and make people see me. Mm. Just rock people. I used to just get people hype and stuff like that. So around that time now, Quinn hits me up and he's like, yo, there's this new radio station happening. They're looking for a hip hop show. Let's put in a tape. 
So we wait, to- wait, wait, wait. Quinn is younger than me. Yeah. I guess he started DJing like with all of them. Che, I had Che on my thing. DJ Che La Soul, Curry yeah. and the crew. Yeah. All the all the man's them from back <laughs> in the days. But I didn't know when Quinn started DJing. But you're saying then he was already DJing. But how did how did you know him then? Well, I did I just knew it from the block. Like, you know, okay. Ricky Fraser was working with him. They were doing the mixtape thing. So I'd see him around, but I didn't, you know, I never went to his parties or nothing like that. Okay. Mm. You know what I mean? But I knew him from the block. I knew his tapes and stuff like that. So he hits me up. He's like, yo, there's this new station. Let's go. I go to his house. We make this demo tape. This demo. This is, no, no, we didn't do the demo yet. He's like, there's a, there's a, I got us a meeting at this radio station. Now, for us, for me, radio stations, I'm thinking like CKLN and all that, you know, and I'm just like, I'm not really, you know, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on the block with, Bayesian, you know, Damien and them guys in in, in, in the Mason Nets, we smoking weed and stuff like that. I missed the first meeting. Mm. Quinn's like, yo, B, I came to the hood. I didn't find you. I'm like, oh, sorry, man. Sorry, man. He's like, they reschedule. We're going to go back. I'm like, all right. So we go. I go into this place and like, I'm like, oh, this is no joke. Chuck McCoy is there. Julie Adams there. That's my boss. And it sounded, I'm like, this is corporate. Radio station, okay. Come back with a demo. I'm like, okay. I come home and I tell my dad about it. And he's like, yo, Chuck McCoy, when I first came to Canada, Chuck McCoy was on the radio. He was the dude. I'm like, oh, he goes, you should take that serious. I'm like, okay. So we go to Quinn's house. We make this demo tape. But I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Like my demo, if, if Quinn had that demo, I'd be like, yo, please don't play that shit. <laughs> It's so bad. <laughs> yeah. We hand in the tape. They bring us in for another interview. We sit down. We're talking. I'm in there. At that time, like, me and Mishy used to do a lot of, like, these corporate gigs with um, with Roots Canada. Mm-hmm. So I, I was like, Root, I had the Roots rather jacket. Roots. I was looking Roots down. Going to this interview. Me and him come in there like we're rappers or some shit. Like, we're like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Excuses herself. We're sitting in the room in the office, and I'm looking at the top, and I see Mastermind, DJ X, da, 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 but the, all the DJs in Toronto, all their demo tapes are there. I look at Quinn. I go, "We ain't getting shit. Let's just get this." I'm like, "We're not getting this job. There's no way. These guys had radio shows. Mastermind's already on. You know what I mean?" Yeah. Friday comes. I come home. I don't even know what I was doing. I was just chilling out. I get this phone call from. I get this phone call from DJ X. He's like, "Yo, how'd you get that job?" I go, "What job?" At Kiss ninety two. I go, "What?" I was like, "I don't know nothing, bro." Yeah. And phone. Quinn hits me up. She's. He's like, "Yo, they called us. They want us. We got the job, bro." I go, "Word." Jeez. Over all these guys. I'm like, "All right." Now I'm like, okay. And I remember that night. It was 1998 because we started in 99. I remember that night. I said, no, we started. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I'll never, from this day forth, I'll never work a nine to five again. Never. Wow. I'm going to dedicate. I don't care what happens. I'm going to put my all into this. And started at Kiss 92 and that was another good two years of experience, learning, meeting, being right. around, seeing how the white people did it. Yeah. They, you know, Kiss Night 2 was, even though they let us go after two years, man, the best experience. That lady, Julie Adams, was the greatest teacher. I wish I, I even wish I was paying attention even more, but that shit was just a party. It was like, you're hanging out with friggin' the guys from NSYNC, Christina Aguilera is in the hallway with you. You're like, hey, what's going on? Eminem's first album drops. He's your, I'm my, that's my first interview. Yo, yo I want to touch on that, but I want to just ask you something. After, because when I when I got into comedy, right? Mm-hmm. I, w- I was starstruck when I met certain people that I seen on TV, like when I first met Russell. But after you perform with them, after a while it becomes oh okay i know you know you know you 
some people come from the states that I used to see on Comic View, and I'm like, oh, I know him, and you're you're on the same show. Mm-hmm. For you, you're down with the Canadian hip hop scene because it wasn't just Mish then; it had to be Cardinal, it had to be oh, Maestro, yeah, Socrates, yeah, Maestro. yeah, Socrates, all of them, right? Kish, who yeah. you, you name it. But because you had that experience, and then the man's them from New York, you yeah. had that experience when you came to Kiss. Did it still feel like surreal? Because a lot of yeah. the artists were new too, and you're meeting them for the first time doing an interview and stuff. So Eminem, look at him now. But you're yeah. saying you interviewed M. But That's how was that experience? That that was that was that energy again was I, I I'm 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 always gonna be a person who is always gonna be a fan of something new. Like okay. my energy level will all I'll never go into something and be like ah. Yeah. No, nah, man. It's new. I'm like, yo, I'm just starstruck. Or I'm I take it all in. Mm. And the reason why for the radio, because it was a new genre. Like I worked once a week on KISS, but I was in that station probably three or four times a week. I was mm. always there just trying to be around the announcers, just soaking up the energy, listening, learning, just being around there because you just never know what was popping off. Britney Spears might be in there, like you know, Master P would be in there, all these things would be happening so i would just want to i would just want to be uh, uh, in that mix and just kind of just soak that all up so for me it was just like again just the experience alone was good i i don't think i was great at radio or anything like that but i had a different energy i remember my boss i sit there one day like i remember it was like we, we were coming up on our first show you know prior to that we were like planning drops and all this stuff and learning for all these i remember i'm scared shitless i'm going to her i go listen you know i've never done radio before yeah like don't worry about it she's like i can teach you how to press buttons i can't teach you to be that kid that came into my office looking with the leather jacket and with that energy i can't i can't teach you that you can you just do that i'll teach you the rest and that's the one thing i'll always remember and i tell kids all that I'm like yo no one can teach you to be you. They can teach you how to press buttons and all that, but they can't teach you. You got to bring who you are. And I just brought who I was to the table and I tried my best. And sometimes it was good. Sometimes it was bad, but I just did what I just felt like. And I feel like, I feel like I was able to bring something to Kiss 92 in that first year. Like we were clocking like 150 listeners a week. Like, Hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. It was yeah. like numbers. Like I would always look at the numbers. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, people are listening to you. I remember man's down from jail were listening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we had everybody was listening, you know, and it was it was good, man. It was good. Yo, I gotta tell you, that that's a time I remember too, because Again, remember I was saying, I know you from back in the days and all that stuff. But then when we heard that you're on the radio, but that's the, that's the thing too. That's when I first knew that you went by Kwame, not, not Demond, oh, right? But that, but here's that, see that there was like, again, trying to find myself and find what I'm, what I'm going to be. So when I was in college, um, I, again, I'm in New York, the rapper Kwame is out. I remember that. My favorite. I loved his album. And I, I love that. I love that dude. Mm. This is the days where, you know, especially our generation, you're looking for that African vibe, finding yourself and stuff like that. So I remember I was reading this book on African names and it said, uh, Kwame means born on Saturday. Mm. And I was born on Saturday. So when I went to college, again, trying to do the reinvent my application i put kwame i just mm-hmm. i just put kwame damon mason and that's what it came in the mail my mom was like what's that yeah you no know, rappers you know we trying to you know <laughs> stuff. yeah, and yeah. I always felt like as a personality yeah DeMar mason didn't you know mm-hmm. everybody from the neighborhood knew, knew me as d love that was yeah. my rap name when i coming up but i was like i can't go by d love like you know what i mean like that just that just ain't gonna work. I didn't want to go Demond or Demond Mason. Yeah. Or Mason. So I was just like, let me just go with Kwame. And Kwame just had a flow to it. So I just left it at that. 
Yeah. Okay. I'd like to hear the story on that. <clears throat> Yo. And it's I'm crazy gonna... because you know what's crazy that because everybody from back in the days mm. they'll come up to me like, "Yo, call me," and I'm like, "Don't, don't call me that." I'm like, "Call me Demar." Like that's how you guys, you know what I mean? Because it makes me feel better. If you yeah. call me Kwame, I'm like, you don't know me. Right. You guys know me because I, you know me from when I was 14, 12. Yeah. Blah, 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 you know what I mean? Like I'll start if we on the streets. Like you know, we working professional right here. We're doing this thing. But if mm. we on the streets, you call me Kwame. I'm gonna be like, "Yo, don't call me that." Trust, trust. I was, I was like wondering. I was like, okay, what should I say for the for the it's the cool, podcast? Fine, you know? But you know, what I mean, that's if you Google, if you Google Demar Mason, you might catch me or something like that. But if you Google Kwame Demar Mason, you'll catch all my pedigree and all that stuff. Yeah, so. true. Oh, this is beautiful, yo. I'm gonna ask you about a few names and 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 ask you what it mean, meant to you because I'm gonna ask about the M thing. But before we do. I think it's time I'm going to ask you this question, man. I want to see how you answer. It's been going good for like three seasons. I like to hear the different things, man. Uh, it's a would you rather question. Okay. Would you rather visit your younger self and give them advice for the future? Or would you rather visit your older self and have them give you advice for what's going on right now? Dude. Ah, dang. See, that's hard because I wouldn't, like, I, I'm a firm believer of your path is your path. Mm -hmm. I've been fired from so many jobs, bro. But if I wasn't fired from my one job in Kitchener, I wouldn't have gone out to Edmonton. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't fired from this thing, I wouldn't have gone to that thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And all of those firings led me to where I'm at right now. All of those, oh my God, I was stressed out, I ain't got no money. Ah, all that led me to where I am right now. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I would want to, I don't think I would want to go back because I would have told my younger self, be fearless, try it, just go for it. Like I always used to say to myself, like, man, like I really wanted to do the acting. And I look at the guys, the black actors who are the OGs right now, that's my generation. And yeah. I was acting at that time. Yeah. I took it seriously and took the leap of faith and just went to LA. And I had a chance to go to New York and live with my homegirl out there who had whose best friend worked on New York undercover. I never did it. Mm. I was I had fear. But I always thought, man, if I had done that, man, I'd have been, I'd have been out there. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I'm, I'm a wild boy. So when I was, young, I was a wild boy. So don't put me in Hollywood. I would have been some. I would have been on some fish. <laughs> you know I'd have been in the problem. I'd have been that that black actor who had the problem. That's why. Stop. I stop. <laughs> so, so wait. I think I, so think we, I would go with the older self. Older self. Mm -hmm. Just, but I would tell the old self, I'm like, yo, don't tell me, don't tell me everything is going to be good. Just just tell me you all right. <clears throat> just say to me, just am I all right? Or just, I'd be like, so am I okay right now? Because sometimes it feels like, and that's all I'd want from my older self. I, I you know, what I mean, like as much as I want to know the ending of the book, I won't go to the ending of the book. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, mm -hmm. good answer. Okay, now whether you chose your younger or older self, this is about your younger self. There's four things. Yeah. What would you tell your younger self about money? Bro. That shit is. I would tell my younger self, put a little bit away, man. Mm. Just put a little bit away. Don't even think about it. Put it away. Mm. Nice. Come back. Come back to it in 20 years. Makes sense. Yeah. What would you tell your younger self about friends? Um, I would tell my younger self, <laughs> Johan told me this. Well, my younger self would already know because Johan told me this when we were in junior high school. He said, a friend is like a penny once lost, another's found. Never heard that before. I, I, I wrote a rhyme and I remember putting that in there. A friend is like a penny once lost, another's found. I remember doing that. I always remember. And what that told me was like, 
what that meant to me was your true peoples will always be there. The mm. ones that aren't your true, they'll be like your friend, they'll be like a penny and they'll be gone. And then you'll find another one. And yeah. that one will be gone. Me and Johan, me and Johan are friends to this day. I was just over at his house for our 53rd birthday, which mm. marked our 40 years of knowing each other. Telling you, man. That's that's a beautiful that's thing. That, that's one penny that's never I've never lost that penny. That penny is never, mm -hmm. but I've lost so many pennies in my life. Yeah. There's some of them that I lost, but you know, not in bad ways, but they're mm -hmm. just not as tight. Like Johan is like, it's just like yesterday. Mm -hmm. I had this young artist on my show, Lido, and he told me something. I'm always hearing gems on this podcast. He said, People come in your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Yeah. So now what you just said, man, it just I like I like hearing these things. I can pass it on. Yeah, man. All that right, two that. more. Yeah, what would you tell your younger self about family? <laughs> um, um, oh yeah. Well, I, I think my younger self knew too. I I, I would say my younger self. My, my younger self always did it. It was you just appreciate your family. Because one day, it's gonna, it's not gonna be the way you think it is right now. Mm. I mean, I lost my brother, I lost my mom's. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so, uh, certain family members I don't talk to anymore. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. but I'll tell you, growing up, my family would have, yo, we was like gangsters. We was a crew. All over. United States and Canada, it was beautiful. So I would tell my my younger self, just you see what you're doing about those memories, keep them, keep them, store them, enjoy yeah. them, keep them, because one day it's going to be gone, and that's all you're going to have. Amazing, mm -hmm. yo man, thanks for sharing this. The last one now, what would you tell your younger self about love? Oh, easy. I would tell my younger self. How do I keep it PG? I would tell my I would tell myself, yo, I, it's like I tell I, I I'll tell my son this. I'll tell my son this. I'll tell my son when he gets older. See all them girls. Don't do it. It, mm. it takes something away from you. It takes something away from you. It takes. It takes. You know, in Hollywood. When you hear all these things about like Puffy and all these guys freaking off and doing all that weird shit, yeah. you had it so much. It's just, it's, you know what I mean? You just get bored of it. Mm -hmm. I would tell my younger self, like, yo, find one, hold on to that one. And, you know, because all these ones you think, you think it's fun. I'd say my younger self, you're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Sometimes I have so much fun, bro, in this industry. I'd be like, I can't imagine what it would have been like to be Tay Diggs or one of them guys. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure those guys. Mm. Like, good God. <laughs> I'm like a little radio guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, this? Mm. For them? Oh. So I would tell my younger self, be like, yo, don't do it. Don't mm. do it. Wow. Yeah. Good advice. All right. Thanks for sharing that. Now we're coming to the end. I want to get into your documentary, Soul on Ice, but I have a couple of names to drop and yeah. I want you to tell me your experiences meeting them because I just posted a promo yesterday for this show and I seen you with Beyonce. Do you yeah. remember that? Do you remember that and how that oh, yeah. feel? Like, like, like yesterday. So it's Kiss 92, Destiny's Child first album. They come to, they come to Toronto I think it was, I can't remember the outside. I can't remember what, what, where we, um, where they were performing, but this is like the first album. They're there. We're backstage. We're all hanging out and stuff like that. I was so arrogant at some, I don't know. Not I think it was arrogant. It was like a nervousness. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like, look at the picture and just look at how I'm standing. Yeah. I'm, I'm on some like, <laughs> yo, shorty, what's up? You know what I mean? I'm on that. But I remember she was over there. I was like, Beyonce, come here. Let me get a picture with you. I literally said it like that. And I even when I said that, I was like, "Oh, have some more respect, man." Yeah. <laughs> I would take the picture, and then 
me and Short were doing an after party, and we we're like, "Yo, you want to come to this?" We, you know, she's like, "Hold on, let me just let me just see what's up." So she goes to, and she's like, comes back. She's like, "I can't." You know, my dad's telling me we're going to this and that, blah blah blah. I'm like, all right, well, you know, good luck, slap hands. Mm -hmm. uh, and but at that after party is sister, sister. You remember that show? Yeah. They were there. Tracy McGrady was there. Char uh, Charles Oakley was there. Jamie Foxx was there. Uh, it was a pretty cool after party. I was short about that. That was a dope. And there was not even a lot of people. It was yeah. Just a couple of us there. You know what I mean? That's it was crazy. so cool. Like, it's just, we were all just hanging out there. Jamie Foxx, hey, blah, blah, blah. blah. It was like, it was pretty cool. So, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Cool. That's crazy. Let's see. Okay. Now I got to ask about her counterpart so you show me the picture with jay yeah and jay is phenomenal rapper right yeah. from the dame dash days till now how was that meeting jay being a young rapper first thing is though tell me something beyonce was she's younger than us you know we're yeah. in our 50s right yeah. she was so she was younger than you at the time yeah but jay is probably the same age, same age yeah. right so how was that meeting Jay as a young rapper? Oh, so at then it was just cool. He this is a guy who had his first album that was amazing, but a lot of people had first albums that were good. A lot of people had good one albums that you just never heard from them. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was just look at like look at it. He's just got the regular sweater, red sweater, and it's just me and him. I remember saying to him, "I'm like, yo, what do you you know? What's the future for Rockefeller?" And he was just like, "Yo, we just trying to." take over this rap shit da, 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 da. all right love the album peace crazy that is crazy and when i look at it now i would love to run into him now I yeah to run into him now and be like holy crap man and i remember seeing him on stage he was just there with a moet and he wasn't moving i was like yo you're boring yeah because <laughs> that's the time oh. was like ha, ha, ha. it's hype mm -hmm. it's like this i'm like he's never changed wow changed lyrically like he's never like his his style has always been the same yeah i could see that in him but now you just said something because one of my favorite rappers was buster rhyme from leaders of the new school days right and then you're telling me and i see you with so many pictures with buster on your page so how was that experience meeting buster because people elevate and change over the years yeah, yeah, yeah. and how was that man buster was good to be around but back because that's when I met Buster, it was his first his first solo album. And so he again, the energy was the same. It was just a high energy. It was very friendly. Him and his crew were always really nice with me, nice to me. And we always exchanged numbers. So whenever he was in Toronto or anything like we'd all, you know, perform and it'd be mad love. But he don't remember. I guarantee he don't remember me now. Oh, I remember, really? Yeah. I remember I saw him at the, he was in this movie a tiff movie he was in a tiff movie and i saw him and i rolled up and i showed him the picture he's like oh man that's old school i was like yeah, yeah, yeah like i met him even before i was on tv the first time i met him was with mishy yeah <clears throat> me mishy him we were back at the hotel hanging out and stuff like that i have some real i got a picture of him i got a really dope picture of him um meditating before performing mm. and me and my camera he was just sitting there that wonderland smoking grooves tour and he was sitting there just sitting and he was just with his head and he was just like that and i just phew, caught that wow. crazy crazy okay you met a lot there's one more the eminem thing i want to get to but you've met people i have a list here man the kenbin matumbo i seen you with anthony anderson akon genuine twilight yeah. quality enough people but tell me something eminem you said you interviewed Eminem, first interview. You're... Yeah, that's my first radio interview. And how was that for you, man? Really cool. Because at that time, he had the reputation. Everybody was just kind of like, oh, this white boy, da 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 da, da he's rude, and he's this, and he's that. Me and him had a great ch chop up, you know. He was so friendly to me. But you know who took that picture? Ooh. Proof. <laughs> Rest in peace, proof. Wow. Look at that picture. Really? Um, he was so nice. We talked about Haley. I got I got the illest drop from him. He gave me the illest drop. I still I use I've used I used his drop. I worked in the radio for 14 years. I always use his drop. And everybody be like, how did you get that? I'm like, yep. 
he was yeah he was he was he was really cool yeah that was, mm. that was cool. wow not like what people were, <clears throat> what people were paying them out to be and you know and i didn't have tickets to his show he's like hey man do you want to come to the show and i was like sure i missed it like so mad that i missed it. i never got to see him perform live but he was performing at the opera house i got there late <laughs> 